Tuesday, people talking sports. Tell me about it. <laughs> I'm working on new ones. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, so much going on, man. Do you see this Globetrotters trick shot? Yeah, that was insane. Out of a helicopter. I mean. He throws the, and he hits the basket. Sure. It's, you know, there are countries that are war-torn that need helicopters. <laughs> right. We're using them for trick shots, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, not even a team in the NBA. The Harlem Globetrotters have their own helicopter. Yeah, if things aren't bad enough for the generals, now the Globetrotters have an Air Force, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. By the way, who even plays for the generals? I, don't, I never got that. They just lose every game? Yeah, I think they lose every game. Not only do they lose, they get their pants pulled down. Uh, <laughs> just embarrassed. It's rough. <laughs> yeah. So much weird basketball news. Uh, Zach Randolph, one of my favorites, uh, arrested oh, for marijuana. Yeah. It's, a sad, it's a sad story, kind of. Sure, yeah. I always knew he'd smoke, because if you, if you take those old Clippers and Grizzlies playoff games and play them with Dark Side of the Moon, it syncs up perfectly. <laughs> 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 Lastly, uh, we have a really great show planned. We have uh, one of the greatest Knicks ever, if not the greatest, Walt Frazier. Oh, my God, yeah. I mean, unbelievable. Styling and profiling. <laughs> he was a great dude. Yeah. Uh, Driving you know, and wilding. <laughs> It'll hit eventually. Just keep it going. Roping uh, and moping. <laughs> I know it. Kylo Quinn, who is also awesome. Yeah. He's got the nice beard growing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do look at him as like, uh, I aspire to his beard. Someday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And someday you'll be 6'8 as well. I pray every night. <laughs> We got a great show coming up. Uh, Walt Frazier, Kylo Quinn. We got Bill Lambeer back on panel. He slept in the room closet. <laughs> and uh, stick around, people talking sports. We're here at Clyde's Wine and Dine. The best. On the basketball court. I'm often asked, do I practice here? I go, I never play here. You know, people are always challenging me. I tell them, keep practicing. Your vocabulary, doing play-by-play, -play, you helped me study for my SATs just by watching you. I feel like I became smarter just listening to you play-by-play. -play. So, I mean, like, who, who, who do you pattern yourself after? Like, what, when you commentate, where did that come from? I started on radio, so you have to be more descriptive. So the addition and swishing, you know, posting and toasting, so all those things work well on the radio. It's, it's you now. It's like I can't, <laughs> if I hear any word rhyme, I'm like, fly. That's it. He's been hell-bent, steadfast, a juggernaut on the glass. Hey, hey, there you go. How you doing? You good? What's up, man? Good, good. Yeah, good. Thanks for joining us. The beer looks good, man. You using just for men in that thing? <laughs> I'm using the same thing as for your goatee. <laughs> James Harden, eat your heart out right here. Oh, James Harden has a nice one, but you know, <laughs> personally, I think mine's a little better. I know, man. You're giving us some comp, man. You can, it looks good. Do you feel good about the season coming up? I do. I do. You I look do. fit. You look trim. Thank you. Thank you. You're I thinner. Noticed that. You keep yeah. getting thinner. You're trying to try to keep my weight down a little bit. Sure. You know, I'm getting older. 27 years old, you know, I can't do the things I did when I was 22. So how yeah, do you do just... that with the diet? What What do you do? Oh, uh, I, I have a chef. Yep. I have a chef, and I think that's the biggest thing, maintaining my diet, just maintaining my meals throughout the day, throughout the weekend. I think that's what really hurts on the weekends, late nights. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know it. I'm a comic, so I'm on the road a lot, and it is ugly. You're not uh, eating much, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you some pot and uh, wine and dine. Steak and potatoes, man. As O'Quinn got a piece of it, rejected by the combination of O'Quinn and Porzingis. It looks like you guys motivate each other. I like watching you guys together because I can sense that there's a camaraderie. And I remember you, you had your biggest game last year. I was on the road in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. I'm watching on my computer. I'm like, I'm cheering. You ripped the ball away. You and KP walk into the sunset like arm in arm. And I was like, that's like the end of a buddy cop movie. Oh, yeah. It was how, beautiful. How did that relationship happen? Because you went over there to this country. I went over there. Last, right? last year I went over. I just embraced his lifestyle, you know, over there. And I was open to everything he did over there. And I think he appreciated that. But I think uh, the biggest thing is I, I always respected his professionalism at him being a, a young player. And I think he just respects me for being a four-year college guy. I like how you play because you feel like kind of a throwback Nick to me. You know, you're kind of like a tougher player. I noticed that you added the three ball last year. Do, oh, can we see more of that this year, you think? I would, love, I would love to do that a little bit. As long as Coach Hornacek doesn't, you know, you know, grind his gears over there when I let it go, you know. Yeah. But I like to stay within my game. If it's an opportunity, I'll take it, you know. Sure. I know Clyde got some nice lines when I knock him down, you know, oh, so my yeah. mom hears it on the broadcast. <laughs> Nobody. Oh, Quinn, again. <laughs> <laughs> and that means I gotta get two. <laughs>
What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen at the ballpark? Baseball. It is pretty silly when you think about it. Baseball only game where the defense has the ball. The kid from Montreal just causing a ruckus. Wow, I hope they beat him to death. We don't need Canadians at American ballparks, folks. I saw a woman take off her top. Wow, a couple of home runs. Flasher running on the field. Oh, man or woman? Uh, I don't remember. That sounds like it might have been me. Beautiful day here, doing some people watching. What's the strangest thing you've seen in the park today? Don't say my face. <laughs> oh, no. Definitely you guys. Well, that is hurtful. I think I saw someone walking his cat this morning. But sniffing train of dogs just going in a circle. Somebody was yelling at himself. I told you not to use the bathroom. Ooh, we have all been there. A guy feeding squirrels out of his own mouth. They're very personable squirrels in the park. Has he ever fed you via his mouth? All the time. We got cats on leashes, pianos falling out of the sky, and uh, old lady bosoms at the Marlins game. We're back on People Talking Sports. First off, he's one of the most physical players of his time, and I'm one of the least physical hosts of all time, <laughs> Bill Lambeer. Uh, his beard is worse than his bite, Anthony DeVito. Oh, I like that bite. And uh, <laughs> Stavi Baby 2 on Instagram. Stop right. Rose, all kids. <laughs> yeah, thank Just going to plug out. the gram. Thank you, yeah. I'm naked oh, in yeah, every man. picture. He, he is nude in every photo. <laughs> it's unsettling. Oh, oh, there you go. Check it out, Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just got a follower. Yeah. You guys should do a shoot together. <laughs> First off, Derek Jeter and his group bought the Miami Marlins. Yeah. You know, going from New York to Miami, it's just older Hispanics and Jews. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's a very smooth transition. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we were talking about star power bringing in mm -hmm. players. It brings people, when you have a guy like that in the meetings, I mean, it probably got him the investors. Yeah. Do you think that will make a difference in bringing stars to Miami? No. <laughs> All the butts in the stands make difference in bringing, and then they don't draw very well. I don't know how they're going to make money. Yeah. The price yeah. they paid, how much money did he put in his own? Yeah, I think he's like $25 million just, just Jeter. Yeah. And yeah, he's not, you know. I mean, they don't the make any person. money. They their franchise grows up, and that's how they make their money, but on an annual basis, they lose. I, and it's also strange because it's like Jeter's also going to run baseball operations. It's like, I don't know, a star player, <laughs> if he's if anything like Jordan right. becoming an owner and then running basketball operations, it's tough. Is there like going to be a. Baseball Kwame Brown, the Jeter <laughs> ruins, you know what I mean? This is exciting. The Knicks picking up KP's option, Christoph Porzingis, uh, yes. special young player. Uh, I mean, New York, it's interesting to see where he's going to live. Is he going to be a Midtown guy? Is he going to be a Williamsburg hipster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's KP going to go? I mean, you've seen this guy a little bit. Have you been to some games to see him play? Uh, a couple. I see him at the practice site. Oh, cool. The practice site's in Westchester. It's a long commute going back and forth into the city, so. Ah. Tell know. me about it. I, I did the uh, gig for the Rangers at Trump Golf Course. It was a long ride back. Let's <laughs> tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you make of his, uh, of his potential? Yeah, you know, he has to put some weight on, but, you know, he's, he's tall. He can shoot. Um, he's the modern-day basketball player for someone of his size. So, I mean, he's going to be successful to what level depends on... Um, you know, in this town, you really have to be surrounded and have to win. If you don't win in this town, they're going to beat him down. I think we'll really know he's a true New Yorker when he, like, starts complaining that you can't get pizza in other cities. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if they're in Memphis, he's like, look, the barbecue's okay, but where's the slice? You yeah. know, like, that's when KP's a real New Yorker. Yeah, they call it pizza, but is it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah when people bring up the water, it's still water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have water other places. Yeah. <laughs> So Zach Randolph was arrested with marijuana. It's upsetting now, though, because they're saying he might get booted from the league, the same oh. thing that happened to O.J. Mayo, which I think would be a huge loss. I love Crazy. Zach Randolph. I've been a fan of his for yeah. a long time. I love how he plays. Yeah. He was in New York kind of at the wrong time. Sure. Yeah. But, I mean, I thought he's been great for Memphis the last six he's or so great. years. And I think it's kind of hypocritical. You know, we, uh, we get on players for not having plans after retirement. He's already started his business. <laughs> he's one of the like older players in the team. Like this happened in his twenties. It's one thing. He's in his thirties. He's proven himself. I'm not worried about him. Yeah, he you might know? have glaucoma. You know, maybe <laughs> yeah. it's medicinal. Really? I don't know. I just, it's tough because it's like with Randolph. He's such a good player, and he like w did. He really rehabilitated his image, and it's just. Like in the NFL, you're allowed to take all these painkillers, but you can't take marijuana to like ease right. your pain. I, I I don't know. I think it's just it's hypocritical. Do you know who this gentleman is right here? 
Uh, I'm gonna go with a hard no. No, I don't. LeBron? I don't know. <laughs> Did you say LeBron? Yeah. <laughs> that is not LeBron, but excellent guess. College player. Is that the new Knicks player? That's Tilakina. He should have got drafted by the Knicks. First one to get it! This is his last name. Take a stab at pronouncing that. He's French. That's the only clue I can give you. N Tilakina. Tilakina? Nidlinkia. Tilakina? Tilakina. Natilakina. Nilakina. Nailed it! Boy, you're nailing that excellent pronunciation. Kind of spicy. Ah, oh, it's Nilakina. Everyone knows that. <laughs> and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but first ballot Hall of Famer. That's what I think. <laughs> This is, uh, this is the heartwarming story. Tim Tebow hits a home run for a kid with autism. Uh, times have changed. I remember when Babe Ruth did it at a major league level. Yeah. Now Tim Tebow's like, triple-A home run is the best I can do. Yeah. <laughs> That's but... where the Mets season is. It's like, they're not <laughs> counting wins and losses. They're counting children's smiles. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they lead the league in minor league smiles given. That's it. We'll take what we can get. Did you ever yeah. make a, a promise for a kid? No. <laughs> 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 I'd probably sell that sign autograph or something yeah, like that, but yeah. no, not on the court. You yeah. never know what's going to happen. Right? Yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever make a small promise, though? So you, like, you're like, I'm pretty sure I can do that. And you're like, like, I can get a oh, rebound. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, you know, in that story, give Tim Peebo credit, though. I mean, he took, he put himself out there not only for this incident, but going into baseball, and he's sure. been successful. No, yeah. Totally. yeah. I'm a Tebow I mean, fan. I've been saying the Mets should bring him up. I mean, I think the NFL should bring him back because they have this know. domestic violence issue. You're like, this guy's never even touched a woman. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board with, I love it. I, and, I, yeah, and, yeah. And, I, and I think, what do the Mets have to lose bringing this guy up? He, you're right, he's an exciting guy. Fans want to come out and see him. Give him a shot. If he can't cut it, yeah. he can't cut it. But he's playing pretty well. No, he's, yeah, he's I playing great. I think every team across the board in sports should have him, just as a PR move, exactly like you're saying. Mm -hmm. It only does good for your team. And who knows? I mean, the guy has turned out to be pretty decent at baseball, yeah. not to mention he's a good human being, which is yeah. more important than anything. That yeah. might he be was, He's ten times the prospect that Michael Jordan ever was <laughs> right. when he went to baseball. Yeah, that's... <laughs> this is two Bur Jordan burns in two days. Yeah. I'm loving this. Yeah, Lambert, oh. it seems like it hasn't left you. <laughs> <laughs> This is a fun story, too. I mean, LeVar Ball, who is getting tired of this guy running his mouth everywhere? I mean, give him credit. He's created a brand by running his mouth. Challenges Ice Cube to the four-point competition, and Ice Cube wipes the floor with him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he lost to a rapper in a basketball competition. <laughs> yeah. He said he could beat Jordan one-on-one, -on -one, and now he's, he lost to Ice Cube, who his only basketball experience is the verse on Good Day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, he claims he got a triple-double, but that's not, no you know, evidence. verified anywhere, you know? <laughs> like, that's, that's all. So, I don't know. LeVar's a, LeVar's a total, he's hilarious. I mean, it's so funny. He's so uncoordinated, you know? Oh, he's yeah. On, he saw him walk down the aisle at a WWE when he was yeah, going into the yeah. ring. It's like, that was uncomfortable to watch. Uh, he <laughs> was doing this. Yeah. He can play basketball. <laughs> really? really? You've LeVar? Seen him LeVar or, Lema or his sons? Oh, his sons. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. No, he LeVar. can't play. They're yeah. great. Yeah, I about LeVar. No, no. Like, wow, your takes, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are surprised. No, Lonzo, <laughs> yeah. I think, I really do think Lonzo is going to be a great player. Absolutely. His kids are still so young, who knows, mm -hmm. his other kids, but, but Lonzo looks... I thought in summer league he looked outstanding. He looked great. Yeah, he yeah. Looks like a guy who can really change the team yeah. in terms of like just as like a passing point guard that gets everybody involved. Like he could do what I think Jason Kidd did when he came to the Nets. He, he has that feel to him where he's just like he can impact a game that much as a player. He could do what Bill Lambert did for this there panel you today. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if, you, if you go back to the dad, it's great that he is surpassed the dad because sometimes the parents just squash kids. Right. right. And, and and they become so just weirded out and this kid has surpassed that and I think it's great. Yeah, and he's also in the news for saying uh, that he prefers uh, LeBron to Kobe. Oh, Lonzo Ball. That's a tough Lakers wow. take. That's a tough <laughs> yeah, take. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a tough take, but he's, well, he's like... right. He's right. No, he's not. <laughs> like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's right. He, but, you know, as a Laker, I'm sure his fans are going to be like, Come. but he plays more like LeBron. He's a, he's a pass yeah. player. Yeah, yeah. Stick around. We got more coming up next with Liz Gonzalez. Bill, thank you so much for thank joining us today, that. man. Yeah. Appreciate Great it, man. Time. With so much talk about McGregor and Mayweather and the fight coming up, we go to Liz Gonzalez for more and another thing. August 26th. Are you guys going to watch? I think I yeah. am. Yeah. 
I'm gonna we should be... have a little get together party for uh, the Floyd fight. <laughs> How many rounds do you think that it's gonna go all the way? No. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I think it will. I think it's gonna be boring. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's just. I think it will go all the way. I think. I. I, I almost think they're gonna like plan it out like a wrestling match. <laughs> like it's gonna be right. like. I feel like Connor's gonna troll him. I feel like he'll, he'll be doing a lot of this stuff. You know where you. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I just yeah, see it they being. They should get like, some chairs involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tables, that ladders, and chairs match. Yeah. Now we're talking. Yeah. A ladder. A hell in the cell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hell in the cell. I like that. But Mayweather's <laughs> talking about changing it up, right? Yeah, so he was on. Did you guys check this out? He was on. Um, he sat down with Stephen A. Smith last week and said a few very strange things. He said that he's lost a step and that he's not as young as he was when he fought, fought Pacquiao, which is obvious that was two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but then he also said that he's going to step back from being such a defensive boxer and he's actually going to attack him. What? This to me is just a complete act of desperation. 12 days to go until the fight and it's not sold out yet, which is interesting when you consider that Canelo and Triple G fight at the same venue three weeks later and they've been sold out for quite some time. Yeah, that makes, I guess for layman, this is exciting to get the seats filled, but if you're an actual boxing fan, you appreciate the defensive style. It's like watching the San Antonio Spurs, like, and Tim Duncan saying, I'm gonna dunk more. And you're like, all right, <laughs> yeah. but use the glass. The, the glass, the bank shot's what made you great. He made the biggest fuss out of Pacquiao. He wanted blood tests, he wanted all of these things for this right. fight that he was gonna take really seriously. Now they're changing gloves, now he's changing his style yeah. completely. Like you just, you thought that you were gonna sell out the entire place because you're Floyd Mayweather, and you didn't. Right. So now, all of a sudden, you're backpedaling. It's kind of sad. Yeah, it's like every move he's made seems obvious in that direction in terms of like, he even, like, didn't he trademark that he's gonna be like 39 and one or whatever? 49 like, and one. 49 and yeah. one, like he's like made it a big thing saying that he's lost a step. So all these things he's doing are for people to be like, I don't know, maybe he'll lose. It's like. He's not gonna lose. Right, He's right, right. the best, maybe, technical fighter of all time. McGregor seems to always know something that we don't. You know what in I mean? What with sense? every fight, I mean, with Nate Diaz, like he's like, no, I want him again. And he figured it out. Well, he yeah. did, but it was, know, it was, though, a, it was a bloodbath. Yeah. He almost lost to Diaz. He, I mean, it was it was a tough fight. If that, that's, but I, I just feel like that's true. What you're saying is true in UFC, yeah. but he's completely out of his element. I agree with Liz in terms of, like, it's just not selling. I mean, it doesn't help that they're charging, like, thirty thousand dollars or mean, something for a ticket prices, it's yeah. wild only mayweather can afford <laughs> 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 to see mayweather yeah. <laughs> so I, I mean i don't know i think that's what it is it's like these are these are just pr moves to just like try and get people into seats which is like yeah. oh i don't know there's gonna have like barbed wire on their gloves <laughs> right. yeah, you know yeah, like yeah. i think it's gonna be a total Texas strap match <laughs> it's yeah it's basically it basically is like a novelty fight totally no one wants to see a good technical fight they want to see someone get knocked out do you think there's any chance that he's maybe just a little bit scared Floyd I mean it's all the trash talking and that just maybe he's like God, I don't know no no, no. chance I he, think I just think he, yeah he's just he's so, he's the best he's arguably the best boxer of all time pound for pound and even though McGregor's a better UFC fighter or MMA fighter that's not what they're doing you know they're yeah. they're, they're just totally out of his element I don't think he's scared but I do think the mind games are something he's not used to I mean that's true whereas you know in boxing he, they usually you have your trash talk but this, he's never seen anything like McGregor I mean McGregor's right. trolling him in a jersey of a player sure. that slept with his wife right. yeah. what's yeah, he gonna yeah, yeah. what's he gonna do in the ring wear boxers with his tax returns on them you know? <laughs> I mean <laughs> he, he's he's I think maybe he's not scared, but I think he's in his head a little I don't know That's the thing about Mayweather is he's so brash and he's so outspoken outside of the ring But once he gets inside it's almost impossible to take him off his game. It, it's kind of that's true of Connor in too. a way Yeah, M McGregor is like yeah, that as well They're both But that funny. is the thing even going back to the Diaz fight if that fight goes one round longer I think Diaz wins that fight yeah. Because he, I mean, McGregor had a surgical sort of a game plan going into that, but as it led on, Diaz was able to get yeah. him out of his head and Absolutely. off what he does well. That goes one more round. He loses that fight. It's Nate Diaz Mayweather. Well, <laughs> I think I just want it to be a good fight. Like, yeah, I just yeah, really want to believe that it's going to be a good fight. But it's not. It won't be. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> August 26th, but more importantly, people talking sports Monday through Thursday. Keep watching. <laughs> nice job. Keep telling nice your friends. Transition. Thank you very much, guys. Good night.